so today we'll start uh, the application part of ir spectroscopy okay last two lectures we have studied the theory behind it that what is ir spectroscopy and how does it work how it affects the change in the vibrational level and all that how the spacing occurs for uh, real molecules in anharmonic uh, model uh, today we'll start i mean in the uh, this one this lecture we'll see few applications of ir spectroscopy how it is applied so for the last two lectures what we have done is exactly this thing right we have considered this dipole so this you can see these are two different atoms one blue another green right so obviously they are not the same so they are heterodiatomic molecule obviously they will have a dipole moment and in doing this kind of vibration this is stretching vibration this dipole moment will change that means the there will be an oscillation of the dipole right now this oscillation will produce what an electromagnetic field this electromagnetic field is actually uh, interacting with the electromagnetic radiation that is given from the source in the instrument right? and of course we are again we again saw that greater the dipole moment change so the more the change it will be Uh, through vibration the more intense the electromagnetic field that is generated okay now in this thing what is happening in an ir instrument when you put a sample which is vibrating this is producing an electromagnetic field and you are throwing towards it a beam of ir uh, from the ir source right and when the frequency matches with this one that when we call it call it that they have coupled and this coupled thing is actually vibrates with twice the amplitude right because uh, they are in phase and they uh, <coughs> resonate okay now this is stretching and bending vibration that this is important in ir spectroscopy and that's why we can characterize molecule we can apply it to uh, in chemistry that this stretching and vibration occurs with a characteristic frequency for different bond so suppose this is cl and this is h right they will occur at a different uh, uh, frequency then if it is br and this is h right because now they will they are different kinds of uh, molecule they have different uh, weight uh, uh, this vr molecule so they will the vibration will change so this is characteristic for a particular bond and this is what helps us in characterizing molecules so as with the uv visible spectroscopy this ir spectroscopy this is a schematic diagram of an ir spectrometer it's almost same thing so there is you see the use of mirror here right? from the source now you have to remember the source of ir source of ir is there are two sources uh, used mostly it is nars filament right? and another source is that it is called globar filament this nars filament is made up of rare earth oxides right and these are i think uh, made up of carborundum these filaments are electrically heated and maintained at uh, red hot or white hot conditions right so it becomes an ir source right and this source then uh, goes through both sample and reference cell this is important the uh, reference to keep a reference to subtract out any noise that is coming and obviously 
uh, both of the beams are then going to detector uh, and you get a recorded uh, spectrum like this. So, uh, the real instrument is much more complicated, but this is just a schematic diagram and you have to remember the what are the sources of IR in a IR uh, instrument. Right? Okay. So, this is what a typical IR spectrum looks like. Right? You, uh, see, it looks like this one. It is almost say it is uh, the opposite of the UV visible spectrometer uh, spectroscopy or spectrum that we have seen. Right? Because in those spectroscopies, we had this absorption in the y axis. Here, if you can see, this is percentage transmittance. See, it is transmittance, percentage of transmittance, percentage. This is percentage of transmittance. And in the x axis, we have wave numbers, of course. So, wave numbers actually is increasing from right to left. It is in the opposite direction, right to left. That means the energy is also increasing in this way, right, from right to left. So, uh, higher frequency is on the left hand side and the lower frequency is on the right hand side of the spectrum. This is a conventional IR spectrum. Right? And what is in, uh, transmittance means? See, in this part, in this part, the transmittance is nearly 100. Transmittance is uh, of course say 95 percent, right. So, if it is 95 percent transmittance, this means only 5 percent is absorbed. That means the absorption is low. Whereas, here in this case, see nearly 100, so transmittance is only 1 or 2 percent, right. So, maybe 1 to 2 percent is transmitted. That means more than 95 percent is absorbed. That means in this region, the molecule is absorbing very strongly. Right? So, there is a strong absorption in this case. Right? So, this is our required peak. This is where we call the band. Right? We do not call peak in IR spectrum, we call bands. Right? We call band it here. Right? And see, there are three types of bands also. These are very strong bands. Uh, usually, we report it as S strong for S. These are uh, medium and these are weak. Right? So, you see strong bands we consider which are more than 80 percent of uh, transmittance and nearly 50 to 70 percent we say this is medium and less than them if the transmitter, sorry, the, uh, sorry the, uh, I have uh, just said the opposite. Right? But the uh, transmittance is, um, I mean, less than 5 percent or 10 to 5 percent, uh, we call them as strong. But the transmittance is 50 to 60 percent, we say them, uh, they are medium, right? And uh, uh, 70 percent and uh, nearly like that, we say that they are weak. Okay. And uh, so, this is a typical IR spectrum. Now, we will find some points before analyzing. Now, before analyzing the spectrums, we will just uh, for uh, real molecules, we will just consider some general uh, points. Right? See, here what is written? The lighter atoms will allow the oscillation to be faster, higher energy, right? And stronger bonds will have higher energy of oscillations. Right? Now, both of these can be directly related from this relation. We already derived it, right? 1 by 2 pi c root over of k by mu. And what is mu? Mu is our reduced mass that is mass of one atom multiplied by mass of the other atom divided by mass of one plus mass of the other atom. Right. See, from this relation we can directly say that 
higher the mass higher the mass of the uh, molecule lower will be the frequency of uh, abs uh, sorry uh, this uh, vibration right because it is inversely proportional to root over of the uh, this reduced mass right? so lighter the atom higher will be the frequency and there is no other atom lighter than hydrogen so any bond which involves hydrogen will be uh, vibrate in much higher frequency and again this one the second part you see stronger bond will have higher energy of oscillation now if we take similar atoms right or say uh, oxygen also right suppose say oxygen so this is carbon monoxide so carbon carbon double bonds in ketones or carbon oxygen single bonds in alcohol right we can say so this one if we see they will these bonds these particular bonds will have this order the triple bond will uh, vibrate at higher frequency than the double bond which will again vibrate in higher frequency than the single bond why it is so because this frequency of vibration is directly proportional to the root over of this spring constant and what is spring constant is nothing but the, it depicts the strength of the bond and we know a for any given pair of uh, atoms the triple bond is much stronger than the single uh, double bond which is again much stronger than the single bond that's why these two things we have to remember right? and this intensities what are intensities see there are two things involved in this spectra right one is the position of the bands right suppose this one this is positioned at around uh, nearly 1450 cm inverse and this is positioned around say uh, what 2900 right so nearly 2900 cm inverse of course this has higher energy than this one and in this spectrum this is also more intense band more intense than these bands right this has matched but in everything every case uh, it might not be the case a band at lower frequency suppose uh, something is like this might be more intense than this one and band at higher frequency right so there are two parts one is the position of the band which gives us the position and the energy of the transition which is higher energy or lower energy and there is intensity right so this is intense this is less intense right this intensity actually depends on two primary factors that whether this vibration is from stretching or bending right first of all because generally we see the stretching will uh, result in a change in dipole moment that is more than than bending right and the electronegativity difference involved in the bonds more the electronegativity difference more will be the uh, change in dipole moment and so more intense uh, the transition will be right now by doing this what is uh, what do you actually do the primary use of ir is to detect the functional groups right with uh, particular ir just by seeing the ir spectroscopy we cannot determine whole of the molecule but because ir spectroscopies are usually very very complicated right we cannot assign it very difficult to assign each and every uh, band in ir spectroscopy but with practice we can uh, e easily Uh, detect the functional groups present in it right but because <coughs> this is what this ir spectroscopy is mainly used for this detection of functional groups in uh, organic chemistry or inorganic chemistry right. so let's see how ir spectroscopy helps in doing that so for general purpose with practice people have uh, assigned this kinds of four primary regions in ir spectrum you can see these are color coded here <coughs> these are not line of demarcation means uh, you cannot say that for any compound this 
carbon uh, double bond oxygen will not appear here. But usually the carbon double bonded oxygen, carbon double bonded nitrogen or carbon double bonded carbon, right? These frequencies appears in this region, right? Whereas the triple bond which are higher, they appear in this region, whereas the single bond which are lower is on the right hand side of the spectrum. Now, you can clearly see from this example that this spectrum which we have taken, right, it does not contain, we can clearly say from this that it does not contain, if it has no other uh, factors, uh, suppose for simple compounds, this spectrum we can clearly say that it does not contain any carbon-carbon double bond or carbon-nitrogen double bond or carbon-carbon double bond or even carbon uh, the triple bond. Right. What it might contain is carbon-carbon single bond and carbon-hydrogen single bond, carbon-oxygen single bond, all these things. Right. So, you can clearly say that how, <coughs> what are the functional groups present. Right. So, these are this typical four regions. So, these are the single bond regions depicted in red, the yellows are double bond region, the green the triple bond region and the bonds with hydrogen because hydrogen is lighter atom so the bond uh, vibrates with higher frequency right so they, they appear in higher energy now you see in this fingerprint region uh, sorry in this red region it is written fingerprint region this is this is actually very complicated in ir spectroscopy in any ir if you take uh, the examples we will see that for this region, it is difficult to assign each and every peak, but as like fingerprint for human beings, right, it does not match with one people to other, the IR spectrum of a particular compound will not match with the IR spectrum of another particular compound in this region, like from 600 centimeter inverse to 1000 or 900, uh, sorry, what is this? Yeah, so nearly. 1000 or 1200 centimeter inverse, it will also not match with another uh, particular uh, uh, compound. Right? In fact, if you are uh, uh, doing a detective work type of thing, you can match it with uh, the data of your database. Right? There are thousands and thousands of compounds in the database right? and you can match the uh, fingerprint region uh, for a particular compound with that database and you can easily characterize it. Right. So, that is why this is called the fingerprint region of higher spectroscopy. Right. Okay, now that we have the, determined the main uh, regions of higher spectroscopy, let us now go ahead and see real examples. Right. So, see all these values, right, you do not have to just uh, completely remember it. Right by uh, time you uh, just remember the most important ones that I will uh, send you through your uh, WhatsApp group, right. But you see here, what we have taken, right. For studying purpose, we are taking the uh, molecule first and seeing the spectrum. But in actual cases, you will see the molecule first and you have to predict the, uh, the uh, spectrum, right. So, this was, this example which we took, right. This was actually for octane. You see, this is the same spectrum we have taken. Example, octane. So this is an alkane. In alkane, what bonds we have? We have only CC bonds and CH bonds. Right? So the CC stretches, right? The only stretching, right? The CC stretches appears in this region. Right? The 1360 to 1470, right? and the CH stretches which are higher energy appears in this region. So, as we have predicted that this was devoid of any carbon oxygen double bond or carbon carbon triple bond, right? we can also see that this has no carbon carbon double bond or carbon carbon single uh, sorry triple bond or carbon oxygen carbon nitrogen bond. This has only carbon carbon double bond uh, single bond and carbon hydrogen single bond. Right? So, this is our spectrum here. Okay. Now see, uh, 
there are two things here also the ch2 ch2 bonds there are ch2 ch2 bonds also right so th these are ch2 ch2 bonds this bond this bond right whereas this bond this is ch2 ch3 bond so there is also two types of bonds ca carbon carbon bonds this is again a ch2 ch3 type of bond so these two bond appear in this region okay. you see and these two these all the others appears in this one so ch2 ch2 bond is stronger in intensity than the cc uh, bonds uh, sorry c ch uh, ch2 ch3 uh, carbon bonds right okay so what we have to take uh, from this slide what, what is the take home message the take home message is that the cc stretches occur from 1350 to 1450 cm inverse and ca stretches occurs in between to, uh, 2800 to 3000 cm inverse right this is what is so now let us take you increase the another uh, group that is another functional group so now we have an alkene here cc double bond so in addition to this octane right uh, so this is octene what we have we have in addition to it a cc double bond and ch vinyl bond now this hydrogens right are not uh, bonded to c uh, sp3 carbons they are bonded to sp2 hybridized carbon right and these hydrogens are sp3 and these are sp3 and these are sp2 so they are in different environment and they will appear in different regions also right so you can clearly see see more than 3000 the ca stretches vinyl ca stretches these are vinyl hydrogens occurs more than 3000 and below 3000 are these things the below 3000 are these protons right whereas this one is uh, in higher energy why higher energy see uh, you have read in your plus 2 classes that sp3 hydrogens are less acidic than sp2 and sp hydrogens are more acidic more acidic the hydrogen the higher will be the frequency of that bond right okay so, and this carbon carbon double bond now appears here so if you compare with with this one you see in this part it was empty now in this part we have a bond here right so it, this is uh, for carbon carbon double bond yeah. <coughs> so as you see just we have increased what from octane we have gone to octene right just one double bond a change in one double bond the complexity of the spectrum has increased so much this is such a simple spectrum right and this is so much complex right and see in this fingerprint region the number of peaks are increasing already increasing because there are other interactions also right <coughs> so main thing what we have to look in this spectra is this carbon carbon double bond and the vinylic hydrogen right which is appears like another peak from for the uh, in addition to the ca stretches right so just by looking at this we can say there's this positions that this compound has a carbon carbon double bond okay now we have uh, changed that octene to octine so there is a triple bond so this is even higher energy you see the ch bond now appears here in the last slide it was appearing in 3000 to 20, uh, 3100 whereas in the previous one this was appearing at 28100 to 3000 right the sp2 hydrogens were appearing in 3000 to 3100 the sp hydrogens are appearing uh, in the region of even higher uh, frequency here in this particular case it is 3200 to 3300 so it is now clearly a different uh, peak and very strong intensity also right 
So these two are clearly different. This is for sp3 hydrogens, sp3 C and hydrogens, and this is the sp carbon and hydrogen. Right? Okay, and this is our C. This alkene, alkyne. Sorry, alkyne. Right? Now, as this is a triple bond, now this is a terminal alkyne. This is very important to note. This is a terminal alkyne. Right? Now, if say I had this kind of this double bond as here, not here but in middle, right? Then I would have this structure, right? But I will not have this one. Why? Because there is no hydrogen. Right? Internal alkyne. In internal alkyne, suppose this is our compound. right like this then there is no hydrogen attached to the sp carbon now if there is no carbon this peak will not appear right so suppose you get a sample of one uh, sorry octyne octyne so, uh, this is octyne now uh, you are asked to say is it one octyne or two octyne or three octyne suppose uh, there is an option uh, say one octyne or two octyne just by looking at ir spectra you will have to look at the peak around above 3200 uh, if there is a peak there you can easily say then this is a one octyne terminal octyne if it is absent you can say that this is not a terminal octyne but this is an internal octyne why because why octyne because you have a peak here the carbon carbon triple bond is present but terminal hydrogen is absent right that's why Uh, this is how we analyze uh, compounds in ir spectroscopy <coughs> okay so and you can see going from octane to octyne oct sorry octane to octene to octyne see the ir the fingerprint region is changing the fingerprint region is changing so it is different for each of the compound right <coughs> no two compounds in ir spectroscopy will show the same fingerprint region right okay now one example from aromatics right. let us take an example from aromatic region aromatic uh, ir are even more complicated than aliphatic one this is just an alkene type of thing i mean there is no other uh, heteroatom or any other uh, double bonds except the bonds of this one right. now in benzene we know that these bonds are roaming about each other right they are in resonance so each of the bond order is neither single not double it's in between it's nearly 1.5 as such this is, so this is neither carbon carbon double bond or neither carbon carbon single bond so they appear in this region right so they appear a bit below a bit below than the normal uh, carbon carbon double bond region right a bit below right and these are the benzylic hydrogens appear in this region it's very complicated because it is attached with this peak what what are the other peaks see there are other peaks also these are for this hydrogen right <coughs> the hydrogens of this uh, term uh, band and we have carbon carbon single bonds also appearing in this region right so see we have something aromatics have something like this now this is interesting see these four peaks here right? these are typical uh, by these peaks you can also assign if you are uh, experienced you can easily assign that how many substitution is there right this is actually a substitution Uh, marker for this mono substituted see our this one i mean i have written this hydrogen but this is not a substitution so this is just an ethyl benzene right so this is a mono substituted benzene so mono substitution gives this kind of bands whereas if you are di substituted ortho meta and para you see they changes in uh, the uh, position and shape the position remains almost same but it is the shapes are different 
Right? So by this, uh, studying this uh, part from 2000 to this 1600 uh, centimeter inverse, if you see these peaks are appearing here, we can easily say is it disubstituted, poly uh, mono substituted, or even if it is disubstituted, then in which position they are, right? ortho, meta, and para. Now, after aromatics, okay, uh, I have already discussed this. Let us go to some other functional groups. Right? So, this is what ethers. Ethers, you know, we have, uh, if it is a say saturated ether, the other or there is only one functional group, the others are just, uh, I mean, sp3 carbons. You have a carbon oxygen single bond. This carbon oxygen single bond, of course, appears here, right. What are these? These are the carbon hydrogen, right, C H bonds appearing in this region, right. These are what? There is carbon carbon single bonds also appearing here, right. See? See? In this region. Right. Okay. And uh, so for ethers, we should look at this stretching and anti symmetric stretching at this one. This 1000 to 1050 to uh, 1150 centimeter inverse. Okay. Now, one more very important thing uh, in uh, you will see in this spectra in this particular slide this is for an alcohol uh, one butanol right so any spectrum ir spectrum showing this broad bands very broad see these are broad not only strong they are also broad right they are also broad bands these broad bands appear due to oh nh this type of bands right so we have two types of bonds, I mean uh, characteristic bonds here, except <coughs> this carbon-hydrogen bonds and carbon-carbon bonds which is uh, which will always appear in most of the organic compounds. What we have, we have this carbon-oxygen bond here yeah, which is appearing. So uh, you see there are uh, two things uh, we have to uh, see here, this carbon-oxygen bond which is appearing in this region and most importantly the carbon oxygen bond uh, sorry the oxygen hydrogen bond in addition to carbon hydrogen we now have carbon ox uh, oxygen hydrogen also why it is in higher energy because the electronegative difference between oxygen and hydrogen is more than the electronegativity difference between carbon and hydrogen so it is appearing in higher energy right and intensity also is high right now, from alcohol, one of the another important uh, functional group is amine. So we take first primary amines, that is NH2, RNH2. So now we have hydrogen, nitrogen bonds right, here also. These appears as a weak doublet. Doublet means they have two peaks like this, right? Weak doublet in this region. So from 15, uh, sorry this uh, 3200 to 3500 whereas for this one this alcohol we it appeared around 3200 to 3400 right? so but what is the difference between this alcohol and uh, primary amine the difference between alcohol and primary amine is see first of all the alcohol peak was broad and a single peak right whereas this one is doublet this is a doublet right so this is a doublet and this was a single peak so this is the first difference and of course this was strong and this is not that i mean strong this is weak right? and the amine have another characteristic peaks which results from the wagging which is results from the wagging at around this uh, what is that 780 bands this one this is also typical of amines which is absent in alcohols 
okay and another band is around this 1600 uh, centered around 1600 centimeter inverse right but most importantly we have to look for these two bands for an amine right? the wiking band and this doublet this will tell us the difference from alcohol the amines in this amine section we have now see secondary amines the secondary amines is more like that of an alcohol because there is only one hydrogen attached to the nitrogen see it is also more like the alcohol but the intensity is lower than that of oxygen hydrogen bond the intensity is lower it is uh, for oxygen hydrogen it is strong and it is medium to weak okay and of course the tertiary amines will not will not have this bond because for tertiary amines it is always attached to uh, all functional groups right uh, uh, sorry all other uh, groups except hydrogen so tertiary amines will not have these groups aldehydes another class of important compound after uh, alcohols and amines are this carbonyl compounds this carbonyl compounds now for carbonyls uh, to detect carbonyl compounds the infrared spectroscopy is very handy right? so this is a typical stretch for carbonyl compounds from 1720 to 1740 or 50 right if there is no other effects so we will uh, just discuss why how the bonds are affected but before that we see the typical uh, stretches so the carbon stretch appears here and the carbon aldehyde hydrogen will appear as a weak band in this region so in year 27000 right? which will be absent for ketones just we will see in the next example see for ketones there is not that no band near 2700 you see it is uh, empty here there is no band in the 2700 region because there is no this aldehyde hydrogen right there is no hydrogen which is attached to this carbon so we have now carbons attached here but no hydrogen so for ketones it appears around 1705 to 1725 region right? so for these are very uh, characteristic bands for aldehyde compound uh, sorry the uh, carbonyl compounds in IR spectroscopy now esters esters have what they have a carbonyl group as well as and this uh, carbon oxygen bonds right? so this type of thing uh, ether type of bonds appears here in 1100 uh, region whereas the carbonyls appear in this region the yellow the marked with yellow right? so you can see these two uh, band if you find these two bands you can say that this is an ester so this lecture may be somewhat overwhelming that uh, and complicated looks like complicated that you have to remember so many things you don't have to right you just uh, when you uh, when you get the data there you will just have to uh, remember very few important bands for your examination purpose <coughs> now this is a carboxylic acid right? another important class of compound these have what you see these are the characteristic we are concerned only about the functional group the ch bonds will always be present there right, <coughs> right? So these are the main groups which are present. The carbon oxygen double bond, the carbonyl, the carbon oxygen single bond in the red, and the carbon oxygen in the uh, sorry the high, uh, oxygen hydrogen single bond for the this one. <coughs> See the broadness of this peak because this is highly dissociated OH as the OH is so much dissociated right so they are very broad right you you cannot say that it, that is fixed with that oxygen right? because this is acidic hydrogen the more acidic it is the more broad it is right? okay 
Now, uh, just uh, two or three examples more, then we will see how uh, it changes. Okay? I don't know, it may, it may be the last example also. This is amide. Amides are what? Like uh, when you react ammonia with acids, right? You get this <coughs> amides. Right? So, this is typically R C double bond O NH2. These are amides. So, in the amide section, you will get this primary amine type of bands also here, the doublet bands here, right? You are getting this, you are getting the carbonyl bands also, right? But at a lower frequency than the carbonyl compounds like uh, aldehyde and ketones, compared to them, you are getting this at a lower band, lower. <laughs> okay, let us see that why this. Uh, this has shifted compared to the ketone or aldehyde. See, in this case, this lone pair of nitrogen is in conjugation with this uh, this uh, double carbon oxygen double bond. As such, this loses the double bond character for some time. Right? It is not a perfectly double bond because it is in conjugation. So you can write here like this. This is also a, an, another uh, resonating structure as such. So, this is as this. So, this bond character of between carbon and oxygen is something in between now between uh, double bond and single bond. So, this has is weaker than the carbon carbon double bond and so this has decreased. <coughs> okay. Now, this carbon nitrogen double bond nitriles acetonitriles uh, or this uh, this is propionitriles right so this is carbon nitrogen double bond so they have a characteristic peak in this region this is very strong peak usually all these nitrogen carbon nitrogen double bond carbon carbon double bond or uh, sorry triple bonds carbon nitrogen triple bonds or carbon oxygen triple bond uh, in car as in carbon monoxide they appear in very strongly in this region <coughs> Okay, I think we have discussed these uh, examples. There are lots of examples. We cannot dis go on discussing all this. Right? Just a uh, few discussions about how the IR bands are affected. W one thing we have already discussed, see, uh, for this amide because of conjugation. So, another example is here uh, of conjugation. This carbon-carbon, carbon-oxygen double bond, this aldehydic or ketonic, Sir, this is the ketonic. This ketonic position, these are isomers. You can see these are isomers. Only thing is that uh, in the, the first example, the carbon oxygen double bond is present in this position of the substitution, whereas it is in the, uh, the next position. Right? So, in the la, uh, next, this one, the second example, this is not in conjugation with the double bonds of the benzene, uh, benzene ring. As such, they appear in the uh, our uh, usual position of uh, carbon oxygen double bond for a ketone right actually that is uh, uh, like a aliphatic uh, ketone but in this case you see this is in conjugation right as they are in conjugation this loses is double bond character and becomes somewhat weaker than the carbon 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 usual carbon oxygen double bond as such its stretch is also decreasing. It is similar to see, it is in similar to this amide, right. So, same, same uh, similar other examples are also there, right. You see, for this example, mm -hmm. the carbon uh, double bond is influenced by the substitution also. For example, this is in conjugation. Of course, this is in conjugation, but if you put this different excess there, right, there is different nature. Right. Suppose you see this nitro, nitro group we know this is electron withdrawing, right. whereas these are electron donating. So, electron donating group you see this will weaken the bond and this will appear at lower frequency, whereas electron withdrawing group will make it stronger bond 
and uh, it will appear at higher frequency. Okay. Now, steric effects is also another concern. See, in both the cases, this is also in conjugation, this is also in conjugation, right. But putting this uh, methyl group, right, here, there is a steric hindrance. Due to the steric hindrance, this goes a little bit out of plane. These groups goes a little bit out of plane. Going out of plane, the uh, extent of resonance decreases. As such, what happens? This extent of resonance decreases, so the frequency increases compared to this. So this is uh, more than this one. So this is one of the example. I mean, it is very very uh, low. I mean, the effect is not that great. And another is strain effect. Right? You see, for different uh, cyclic ketones, we have different uh, positions. Right? More the strain is there in the more strain means more. I mean, very strained ring is there. For uh, this, the three member ring, the four member rings are highly strained. As such, they are, this carbonyl uh, stretching is occurring at very high frequencies compared to the normal uh, less strained. This is the less strained, right? The most less strained ring is the six member ring, right? And the seven member ring also, this is due to some uh, steady effect, right? So, this is going away from, see, from the normal region, this is the our normal uh, carbonyl frequency, it is going to, uh, the more straining is there, the more higher the frequency for the carbon uh, oxygen bonds. Uh, another thing is hydrogen bonding. Right? See, this is the higher spectrum of butanol. This is the higher spectrum of butanol. You have seen the higher spectrum of butanol here also, right? In the other bond also you have seen it. <coughs> Sorry. We have already seen this higher spectrum of butanol, if you remember. Uh, yeah. See this broad band, all these things, right? For butanol. Now you see, in this spectrum, we have this butanol is in gas phase. So in gas phase, you do not see this broad band anymore because in gas phase, this oxygen bond is not, I mean there is no hydrogen bonding, the, uh, the oxygen hydrogen bond is not uh, very much vibrating, right. <coughs> That's why we have this kind of very most more, more or less very clear right same is happening when you put this uh, this alcoholic uh, uh, this uh, example i mean another example of alcohol but very steric right you have put two tertiary molecules here and you see the you do not see the broad band of alcohols here right okay so this was more or less the discussion about IR, uh, we will not discuss IR further because we have already used three lectures for IR. Uh, in the next uh, lecture, we will uh, discuss another spectroscopy, right.